welcome to art mind today we are learning the freeform pen tool in photoshop the freeform pen tool is located over here and its shortcut is p now almost all the options of the freeform pen tool are exactly the same as that of the pen tool which i have already taught in the previous tutorial so i'm assuming you watched that i could have used shape mode as well but for the sake of better teaching i'm gonna use path mode all right so i can take my mouse click press and hold draw and then when i'm done i can release the mouse button also if you want to get rid of the anchors temporarily all you need to do is press and hold control summon the direct selection tool and then just click well this was an open path how do we draw a closed path i'll take the mouse click press and hold draw go to the initial point then when I say the circle, I'll release the mouse button. So this is a closed path. And of course, if you don't want to see the anchors, we press and hold control and then click. There's actually another method with which you can draw a closed path. I'll click over here, draw. And then if I want to close the path, I'll press and hold control and then let go of the mouse button. You can also temporarily turn off the freeform pen tool and access the normal pen tool. I'll start by normally drawing the path. Suppose now I want to turn off the freeform pen tool. All I need to do is press and hold alt and release the mouse button. So if I move the cursor now, I get this straight band, which if I click, I can create a straight line. Alt is still pressed and we are still getting the straight band if we move the cursor. Let's say we want to turn on the freeform pen tool now. All we need to do is press and hold the mouse button, let go of the ALT key and then keep drawing. Next we are going to explore this settings option which is also there in the shape mode. I am going to go back to the path mode, click on the settings option. We have already studied these two options in a previous tutorial for the pen tool so I will skip this and go to curve fit. It is at its maximum value which is 10 and we are going to see what it does when it is at its maximum value. I'm going to click and start drawing a path and I want you to pay attention to the minute movement of the flow of the path. Now before I let go of the mouse button, I'll take and save a picture of it and place it on the side. Let's release the mouse button and you can see a difference, right? The more the value of the curve fit, the less the final path is going to adhere to the drawings of the initial path. So the final path is going to be rather simple and with much less anchors. I'll try the lowest value for curve fit now. The lowest value is 0 0.5 so let's put that in let's draw the path and like before i'm going to save a screenshot of this initial path before i let go of the mouse button let's release the mouse button now you can see an exact intricate imitation of the initial path over here and so the final path is now more complex and with more anchors we have the rhinoceros over here which we would like to trace with a freeform pen tool but it's never going to work if you try to do it like that. So I'm going to undo this. Then try out the magnetic option which is going to take care of this. This is the same thing by the way. And then we'll trace the rhinoceros. This time I'll click over here and let go of the mouse button. And then as I just run the cursor casually, a path is created alongside through a sort of magnetic pull. I'm going to quickly trace the whole thing. And then when I get to the starting point, I'll see this circle which is when I click and close the path. Lastly to hide the anchors, control plus click. Well we can do a couple of things with the freeform pen tool while we are still on the magnetic option. I'll click over here. The magnetic option will then automatically trace the path and place anchors wherever needed. But suppose I want an anchor over here for sure and don't want to rely on the magnetic option for that. I can simply click and create an anchor. Now let the magnetic option take over. I want another anchor over here so I'll click here as well. And not just corners by the way, we can click and create anchors anywhere we want. Like I feel like creating an anchor over here, so I'll do that. I'll click another anchor over here. 
and then close the path. Next we'll learn how to turn off the magnetic freeform pen tool and turn on the normal pen tool temporarily. First I'll click and trace with the magnetic freeform tool. Let's say I want to turn off the magnetic freeform tool when I reach this corner. All I need to do is press and hold ALT and then click. Now if I move the cursor we get this straight band. I can take this and then click and create a straight path like so. But the problem is, immediately after this, the magnetic freeform pen tool takes charge and starts doing its job. That's because we let go of the ALT key. So this time, we won't. I'll press and hold ALT, then click over here. So now, we get this straight band which will go and click on this corner. Since we are still on the ALT key, the magnetic freeform pen tool should be still turned off, right? And it is. Now let's say I let go of the ALT key and clicked over here. It's gonna again return to the magnetic freeform tool. I want the pen tool again, so I'll press and hold ALT, click. We got the band, then click over here. Since ALT is still pressed, the pen tool should be fine and then we close the shape. Next we are gonna look at how we are gonna delete anchors when we are still in the magnetic option. I'm going to start tracing this first. Suppose I do not want this anchor and want to delete it. Well, we can use the delete or the backspace key. But not just like that. I have to go back and take the cursor on the anchors and hit delete or backspace a couple of times or as much as needed. Don't worry about these new anchors that are forming as we go back. Since we have two anchors, we just hit delete or backspace twice. We'll go back again. Backspace. Go back, backspace, you get it, right? Next, we are going to look at the options that belong to the magnetic option. The first option that we are going to discuss is frequency. Zero is the lowest value and we are going to use that first. With a low frequency value, we are going to get the anchors less often as we are in the process of drawing the path. So we have a total of 11 auto-generated anchors and mind you I haven't closed the shape yet. But why is that even worth mentioning that I haven't closed the shape yet? Because both the placement and the number of anchors will be different between what we have before closing the path and what we have after closing the path. The frequency option that we are studying only controls the anchors that are involved before closing the path or finishing the path for that matter. Let me just click and show you the difference between before and after. And you can see the stark difference. So these anchors are controlled by the frequency option and not these. The final anchors are instead controlled by the curve fit option that we have studied earlier. Now I'm gonna bump up the frequency value and see what it does. Its highest value is 100 so we'll try that. So now when we begin to draw the path we should expect to get the anchors more frequently right? Earlier we had 11 anchors and we should definitely have more anchors now. And looks like it does. We have 62 anchors this time. Now if I click and close, the anchor is going to change, right? Yes, it does. Just remember that you need less anchors to trace simple shapes and more anchors to trace complex shapes. Let's learn the next option under magnetic. We are going to explore width now. And before I begin, it's best to turn on the caps lock key on the keyboard. We get a circular brush kind of thing with a crosshair in the center. You can see that the present value of width is 70 pixels, right? This 70 pixels is nothing but the radius of the brush. First, I'm going to decrease the width value and show you its function. Let's go with 10. And you can immediately see the brush diminishing in size over here. But how does it work exactly? Think of this circle as a radar. But radar to detect what? Well, it's a radar to detect age. So if I click and move, it's going to try to find an age just from this region. And you can see, as soon as I go off the rails, the radar can no longer detect the age of the circle. I'm going to take the radar close to the edge and it works just fine. I'm going to go off for a bit again. So you have to be very careful when you're drawing the path when the width value is very low. 
I'm gonna undo this and try a higher value for the width option. I'm gonna use 100 this time. We got a bigger radar now. This time it's gonna try to find the edge inside or near this bigger circle. So let's click and move. And even if I go off a bit, it's detecting the edge, right? And that is because the edge is still within the range of this big radar. So a bigger width value gives you the freedom to be sort of carefree while drawing your path. Last we are left with the contrast option which to be honest with you I am myself unsure of. Nonetheless I'll show you what little I've understood. First let's work with the lowest contrast which is 1%. The contrast value basically denotes the contrast between two surfaces that should be eligible to be considered as an edge. At least that's what I have understood. Since we have selected a contrast of 1%, this blurry circle which basically has no contrast on the edge should be easily detected, right? Let's find out. But it's not working the way we expected, is it? We have a weird square shape instead of a circle around the edge. This is where it begins to confuse me. But hold on, there's more surprise in store. Since we chose one person to be the contrast for an edge, this circle should not be detected, right? Because this black circle has a good solid contrast with the background. But when we go in and use the freeform tool, it detects the edge, which is totally absurd. I'm gonna undo this and use a higher value for contrast. I'm gonna go with the highest which is 100% and it should favor this circle right and it's good to see that it does but this circle doesn't have a high contrast of 100% on the edge so it should go undetected and quite rightly so it is again formed a weird box shape like before so I won't be wrong in saying that the magnetic freeform pen tool only detects solid edges no matter what the contrast value is and this is all I have for today. Make sure to check the other videos. I'll see you next time. Bye.